Science is our target audience are master level students whose native language is not English. We is truly a whole team which consists of myself. I am the coordinator of the graduate program and the master program for transcultural studies here at the cluster. Andrea Hacker, who is the cluster's managing editor and also lecturer for academic English and writing. Zara Balas and Shukla Shatterji, who are both doctoral students here at the cluster and have been working with Andrea in the editorial office for a few years, right, each. Um, and we are further supported by our two student assistants, Nathan B. and Aisha Azif, and by Eduardo Serrano uh, for film production and Richard Littler for screenwriting and design. Before we talk in the panels about the ins and outs of making a MOOC and financing it, um, in this morning session, we want to give you a bit of a context for our um, project, but also for today's workshop here at Heidelberg University. And I want to start um, by sketching the concrete institutional setting of our project and our MOOC. And so hopefully also answer the question, why would the cluster Asia and Europe develop a MOOC on academic writing in English? The cluster was established in 2007 um, first and foremost as a research institute aiming to not only do research on Asia, but also with Asia. Um, in the resulting international network of approximately 250 researchers from various nations, um, English became the working language almost per default. In 2008, um, the graduate program for transcultural studies was established. Um, half of our PhD students again come from Asia and so the working language for all classes and actually for most PhD theses written is English. But as most of our students um, actually are not native speakers, we have incorporated a workshop on academic writing in English into their curriculum and Andrea has been teaching this workshop since 2010. All PhD students of Heidelberg University have also access to the Graduate Academy, where Andrea is also teaching, and students have access to a writing support service. And I have to say for the classes PhD students, this setup works quite nicely. It's a somewhat different story um, for the MA Transcultural Studies, which was established in the winter term 2011. The aim of the program or the idea behind it was to translate the cluster's research approach of renegotiating concepts of cultural boundaries and cultural transfer directly into teaching. To um, therefore include all the wonderful researchers that we have here at the cluster as teachers, teachers and to facilitate a truly international environment also for our students, the language of teaching and examination is English. The <clears throat> interdisciplinary nature of the programs, its aims, and the possibility to study in Germany without knowing any German um, make the program very attractive, especially to um, international students. And actually, the MA has uh, one of the highest numbers of international applications in the whole university. We had 140 last year, and this year we received um, over 120 international applications and about 40 German applications. So for the MA Transcultural Studies, the fact that it is taught in English is mostly due to the fact that it is, that it is hosted at an English-speaking institute. But such a decision for English as teaching language at a German university, of course, also reflects a larger development in the internationalization of university education. Around um, the year 2000, the first comparatively few um, English language deg degree programs were established in Germany. This means that for the first time international students uh, could study in Germany uh, and not in German. According to an article in Süddeutsche Zeitung, by 2012 already 776 degree programs were taught in English. 
And currently, I checked a few days ago, the Hochschule Campus uh, lists 1,012 English language programs in Germany. Of the 5,330 master programs that are currently offered at German University, 602 are listed as English language programs. In the humanities and social sciences, it's 145 of 1,070. 771, so roughly 1 in 12. The vast majority are American and English studies programs. The rest are almost all very new, very interdisciplinary, often um, internationally set up programs. Quite a few require a fee. At Heidelberg University, 14 of our 86 master programs are taught in English. In the humanities and social sciences, it's six out of 53, of which English and American studies account for two. Additionally, more and more master programs at Heidelberg University offer optional classes in English as part of the curriculum, or they allow students to attend classes in English-speaking programs like the MA Transcultural Studies. And so actually, in the past summer term, roughly um, a third of the students attending our classes came from other disciplines, other programs. But <clears throat> what does it mean for international but also German students to study in English at a German university? On the plus side, um, as I already uh, mentioned, English as teaching language uh, furthers research-based teaching as it allows us to include international researchers as lecturers. Fluent English and intercultural competency certainly increase students' career chances within but also outside of academia. On the downside, international students sometimes leave the country speaking only a few words of German since they didn't really have to learn for their studies. This also means that they are sometimes not truly integrated into university life and structures. But even if we set aside these broader implications and we focus on the time of study itself, studying in English brings with it one core challenge for almost all students. Suddenly, they have to present, write, write exams in a foreign language, namely English. In the MA Transcultural Studies, we currently have students from um, over 40 <coughs> countries. This means very different cultural, but also academic backgrounds. And again, a vast majority of students whose native language is not English and whose BA most often was not taught in English at all. So what we realize is that we do not only have to teach them transcultural theories and research methods, but also have to help them adjust to writing in English. And to do just that, Andrea and her team have been offering um, courses in academic writing in English, also at the master level here at the cluster. At first, the course was offered only in the summer semester to support students who were writing their master's thesis. But due to increasing student numbers, who went from uh, 20 plus in 2011 to by now um, approximately 70 per year, and so we are now offering a class every term, and it is still not enough, especially since the demand um, is not only there from within our own program, but also from students from other disciplines, some of them uh, who may even study mostly in German. The reason <coughs> is obviously that um, being able to write academic texts in English is becoming increasingly important for young academics if they want to compete internationally. We are I have to say we are not the only department at Heidelberg University who offer classes on academic writing in English. The Writing uh, Resources Center at the English Studies, Studies Department is open to all students and they offer a whole range of services, but even these combined efforts are not enough to help students to adjust to this massive new challenge in making a career in most academic disciplines today, I guess. Obviously, a MOOC on academic writing in English cannot offer the same kind of input and or learning experience as an intensive class of 15 participants 
um, with a lecturer in front of you. But we do hope to help students to develop strategies to avoid the most common pitfalls that non-native speakers tend to encounter. And of course, we hope that our course can raise awareness that internationalization in terms of English language teaching needs a whole new infrastructure to also teach the soft skills needed to tackle this challenge and to ensure that students truly benefit. But here I'll stop and hand over to Andrea, who really is the expert in the field.